Excellent. And now I'm going to go to... All right, so hey everybody, I am on Repl.it right now. If you're joining us, this is a live recording of how to do Repl.it and JavaScript Refresher. Um, so first thing you all know how to do is log in. You should have made an account by now. I've created a burner account um, so that I can do all this stuff with you guys. So Mr. Reefen Stall. I think I accidentally misspelled my name on this. It's kind of funny. Actually, I know I did. All right, Mr. Reefen. Okay. So I just logged in the same way a student would. Um, so a lot of students struggle at this screen. It's not clear. Well, if you have joined my class, you're just going to go up here to student. And then as you can see, my enrollments are here. These are classes I'm enrolled in. I'm going to go down to this one, computer science one web. So here is where your student interface for all the assignments. As you can see, console.log, we have variables, performance task, intro to variables. This is everything. Um, that you guys have been asked to complete in my class. So basically everything up till now is me showing students how to get into the classroom once you signed up. So that was that. That's nothing special. Um, but here, let's go over the concepts now. Uh, some things I see, and um, let's look in a, in a, at an assignment right now. So we have, in this assignment, um, a couple things you need to be aware of. These things right here that are really hard to see, these are the file tabs. Um, and basically, this one right here is an HTML file, which stands for Hypertext Markup Link, or Language. And you don't need to do anything with this. So, like, I see a lot of students that will, like, come in here and start writing console.log. And then, basically, they go to hit run, and then nothing happens. Um, and as you can see here, these are the errors, you guys. Anytime you see X's on the side, those are helpful. Don't be afraid when you see those. They're actually telling you to fix something in your code. So you see when I got rid of the error, it now works fine. Um, but anyway, here is the index.js file. This is where you're going to be writing all of your code. Now, when you first hit run on this, is it's set to results here, guys. So on the results side, we've got click on the console tab to see the results of your console.log statement. I'm actually embedding directions basically in that, trying to catch students, but I don't think it's been working. But you can see how that's exactly what's inside of this HTML right here. Click on the console to see the results of the console.log statement. So once again, you can pretty much ignore this whole area, index.html. Down here, I may have some notes that are just saying, hey, you need to click on console. This is what you should be working on, guys. This is the computer console. This is where all your JavaScript output will be. Here is where you write all your input. So um, before I start writing any code, I want to point this out. Um, there's a couple of things you can do here, guys. Focus is one of my favorites. So look, I can immediately collapse all the directions so that I don't need to see the directions. Like if I just need to focus on code, we have reset in case I, for some reason, like I've had students that have completely erased this. And I'm not sure I actually, I can test this now kind of. Um, but basically, this line of code right here is connecting this index.js file to this index.html file. So basically, it makes it so that my JavaScript that I write in here is going to be able to directly affect my HTML here. So that's why you also want to make sure that stays. If it you deleted that, just hit reset. It will reset all of your work, though. Um, libraries is not important. Um, one thing I want to check out before I go any further is I'm going to go to account real fast. I just want to see if I can change email settings, connected service, roles, billing, my account. No, what I'm looking for is a light and a dark mode um, so that basically some of this stuff is easier to see like up here at the top because these tabs, they aren't very distinguishable. I do have a built-in um, add-on you can get for Google Chrome, guys, if you really want to. It's called Dark Reader. Check it out. It's awesome. All I do is toggle on and off, and I'm able to basically... This looks a lot cooler, right? This is much better to work with. Um, but if you don't like that, you can just continue with um, light mode. If you install this package here, Dark Reader, you can just Google search and do that. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about the instruction side. 
Basically over here on the right hand side, I put all of the instructions for the assignment. So here you have to read guys. Oh, I know it's so hard to read. No, I'm just kidding. But in general, this is your fallback, right? If you can't ask me, you need to look here. It says click on index.js file located at the top. Um, I know I'm preaching to the choir for some of the kids. You guys know this stuff, but there is a lot of students that are still struggling with this basic directions. So that's why I'm making this video and taking this time. So here we have write the following on line one, console.log hello world. So I'm gonna go over here. All right, I don't know why I clicked run, but on line one, all right, so it's saying I could optionally, I could delete this comment, right? Or, you know, what I would do, guys, is just leave the comments because I kind of leave them there to guide you and break up your problems. And so here I'm going to type hello world um, and then watch. I've just written a console.log for JavaScript. I'm going to click run. It does not appear in the results. However, if I click here, you can see that in the console, the string hello world has been printed. Right, so this says click the console tab, right? This just goes into everything I just told you. I think it's kind of, I don't want to go over it too much, but then it says add three console.log statements, say anything you want, right? So hey guys, watch this. If I'm a hardcore developer, I'm going to do control C. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'm going to double click here and be like dog world, cat world, dinosaur world, run. Wow, I just completed Mr. Reefenstall's assignment, and I know how to use console.log. I am smart. Hit submit, and then it goes to me, and I'm going to grade it. Um, okay, so that's a really important part of just the general overview for Repl.it and the students that are always confused on how to do this. Um, a big thing I want to go over is performance task one, because it seems like a lot of students don't remember how to write a function. Uh, and that's fine. We did that on CodeHS, and I'm going to do it here now. So once again, let's take a look at this. It's going to load the assignment for me. And this, of course, guys, you have a graded exit ticket I'm administering at the end of this. Um, so this does ask you questions like, what is a function? What is a console.log? Um, and obviously, that's going to be an easy 100 for any student that just knows this stuff. So here it says, write a console.log statement that states your full name. First thing, as soon as I see that, I should know I have to go over here to this and look. I've sort of embedded the same thing you need to do um, right there. So there we go. Oops, I don't know. I hit down. But yeah, I'm done with direction one. It says I can collapse this too, guys. And guys, remember, I can toggle with this with focus on and off. But right now, I really need the directions. Don't need to see the console as much. But I do recommend that every time you write a line of code, go ahead and run your code and check it, right? Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bunch of X's over here on the left, and then you're not going to know what you did. So this next step is define a function named dogbark with a console.log inside of it that prints bark bark. Let's go to the park. So to define a function, you're going to write it. You say function. You say dog bark. You then give it the syntax, which is the, it looks like a function call, but it's not. Then you're going to create the curly brackets. You're going to hit enter. Um, it may even auto-complete the curly brackets. Let me see. If I open one and hit enter, look, it just immediately generated that other one. Um, so console.log. And then here the instructions are bark bark. Let's go to the park. You know what? I'm a programmer. I'm not going to write that. I'm going to share and borrow that code. Thank you, Mr. Reefenstall. Um, oh, let's go to the park. Oops, I probably should have gone over that. So I, I just found a major boo-boo. You actually can't do another quotation mark like that um, unless you'd put a backslash, right? Because the computer, when it sees this, that one, and this one, it's basically telling the computer that all of that needs to be a string. So when the computer's reading this and it gets to this one right here, guys, that was why it was kind of um, discoloring my project. You see how it looks like that? And look how many errors just came. Unclosed string, unclosed string, unclosed string. So this one is basically opening a string, but there's no closer. So to fix that, you put a backslash, right? And then now, if I hit run, nothing will happen. That's just the Andrew Reef install from line two. But that's why the next instruction says, hey, will you call this function? So guys, this is what a function call looks like. This is a function definition. This is a function call. I'm going to hit run here. And then look, 
Because of the code on line 9, it's now producing bark, bark, let's go to the park. Right, so a lot of students, that was a huge struggle that everyone had. Um, and so I'm, I just am going over all this. Also, for this one, I don't always do this. It just depends on how nice I am. But look, I put code examples down here in the directions, right? I've got console.log, function definition, function call, and then this is a comment, right? Because I think the last part of this is write a JavaScript comment. So it says call bark bark, let's go to the park. That's one we don't need. And what's funny is all of these are comments. So like you could just erase this and just be like, my favorite color is green because it is. Yay. Right? And so that's all I was looking for. And if you did that, and if you still do that, you can get a hundred for this um, summative grade, guys, a hundred. Um, I literally just did the test in front of you. You won't see very many teachers do that. But anyway, when I run my code, it should just look like that. And what I'm looking for is this comment right here. So excellent, guys. So I'm going to hit submit. I really hope this is helping some of you guys right now. Um, so you can see I've submitted, submitted. Intro to variables. I had a lot of students on this one only do one variable and then stop. Um, but clearly, you can see here in my directions, it says uh, write at least one expression line of code for each variable type, string, boolean, number. So by now, I'm not even saying go to index.js because hopefully you should know that. And then here it says write an example of each type of variable. I had you guys take notes on this. So many of you did an excellent job um, just crunching this out. Once again, you could name these whatever you want. It doesn't have to be my string. I just do that so that it's like this could be called cat dog. I don't know what I'm thinking when I'm always like, cat dog, cat dog. <laughs> just, it's simple. Um, so I just created three variables of those three. And then the last part is use a console.log statement to check to make sure you stored the values correctly. So basically, they're saved. If I hit run, I don't see anything in the console because I didn't really do anything other than save this information. However, now if I go console log and what I'm doing right now is I'm asking the computer I'm saying computer will you tell me what value I saved in my number and also will you tell me what I put for my string and you'll notice here see this part that comes up this drop down menu that REPLit is already sort of detecting that you've saved a, va uh, a variable called that string so here I'm going to do console.log once again guys I could have copied and pasted to save time it's all on you, it just takes practice. Now I should see these three values printed to the console. Very good, 400, my string, true. So that is a, this is a number variable, this is a string variable, and this is a Boolean, right, true or false. So that is intro to variables, um, okay. Once again, I wanna point out closing focus, but most of the time you need it open if you're just going line by line. Um, let's see here, and then let's do arithmetic operators real quick. Just while everybody's here, because this was the last thing we did, and we might as well review it. So in arithmetic operators, um, I'll even put on dark mode here one more time. I just think it looks cool. Um, it actually makes it easier to read on my screen. Um, the code syntax is a little better. So I'm going to ignore index.html, go to index.js. It says initialize slash create two number variables labeled x and y. If you look over here, that's the same thing I said right here. Um, I even give you an example, but you'll notice I said I want unique values, so hopefully you did not just use 42 and 124. Um, so I'm going to do x is equal to, four, I don't know what's with 400. Why well, always 400, Mr. Reconstall? Oh, a negative value. Let's go crazy. So here we go. I just initialized, which means I sort of told the computer, hey, remember this. Then it says perform an addition operator. So I'm going to create a new variable to store those in. This is a big part here. Um, basically, I want to save the answer. Imagine taking a test and not, and this isn't a good example, but say you wanted to save your work, just the answer to share with everyone, you would want to store it in a variable. So here I'm going to do x plus y. And then immediately I'm going to console.log sum. So this is now holding the x and y added together, which obviously has to be defined first. So now if I hit run, 
and I see right there negative nine one thousand nine hundred and thirty, right? So that that's really cool. Um, next here it says perform subtraction. I mean, if you wanted to, you could copy this whole format, guys, like this. Control C, paste it in. I'm going to call this diff for difference, and then I'm just going to change this, and then obviously I have to change this as well, and then I'm going to run. And then look, it's going to be 2734. So that's the difference in value between these two things. And that just goes all the way down with division, um, with multiplication. So what is it? What is it called when you find the, is it the remainder? So let's just, you know, you can shorten it, guys, programmers. They shorten their definitions, but obviously, if it's too short, no one can understand it. If it's too long, it's taking up too much space. So you have to find this sweet spot when you're writing your own code. Um, so that comes with like the individuality that comes with being a programmer. All right, so here is the uh, results of that, x and y being divided. Cool, so that was the assignment you were supposed to complete. I did see that I had a couple students, I mean a large group of students that had not finished yet. So that's something that you are all going to be working on finishing. Um, what is it called? The product in multiplication, x times y, console.log, product. But yeah, this the reason I have us doing this is to get reps, guys. Slowly and surely, you guys are going to become more and more comfortable writing the syntax, storing variables, all that good stuff. Um, perform exponential. Uh, can I just paste again, right? I don't know what it, what is the power of. I'm just going to call it exponential exp experience. Right. Um, and then this one is a double star, right? Okay, I'm not going to do any more. Oh, interesting. It equals zero. Why is that? Is that because it's a negative number to the power of a negative number? Yeah, I think that's it. Math is cool. All right, so guys, everything I just showed you is Replit, and I covered all of the assignments. Um, looks like I have a little error here. Expected an identifier. Okay, I'm just going to ignore that because it's not a red one. It's just a yellow. It's warning me. Um, last thing I want to do on this video is show you a great place to get resources. So say Mr. Reef Install is teaching us about concatenation. Watch what I do here, guys. Super important. I'm going to hit New Tab. I'm going to go to my Google bar and be like, how do I con... I'll spell first. would be nice. Concatenate JavaScript. Make sure you say the language, guys, because concatenation can be in many languages. I'm going to hit Enter. And then here we have, in JavaScript, concat string... Okay, I don't want that. I want... Hmm, JavaScript basics. This was probably not the best one, but <laughs> I'm going to go to W3Schools, and it'll show you right here. Um, it'll tell you everything you need to do for concatenation. Look, If you look over here on the side under JavaScript, you've got all these resources that go over tons of pieces of information. Um, so here we've done syntax, variables, operators, arithmetic, assignment, um, Soon we're going to be getting into data types, right? You guys are going to learn how to create objects. That's the next big thing. So I'm going to have you like think of an object like a character sheet in a video game, like with your stats or, you know, anything. Um, we've talked about functions, but look, a lot of students didn't know how to write a function, and they can come right here, and they can even, you know, you can come here and copy this, guys, but I will know if you just copied and pasted it and didn't change it, right? So if this says P1, P2, I haven't even taught you about parameters. So like that should not be in your code. But if you just want to come here and get the base thing to modify, you're always welcome to do that. Developers work smarter, not harder. That is the name of the game. So anyway, this is a great resource. Once again, it's called w3schools.com. If you ever need help and I'm not available because it's the weekend, yeah, I know some of you guys texted me, texted me at 7.46 on Friday. I do not respond. <laughs> Learn JavaScript, and then it's all right here. Everything that you guys are going to be practicing and working on is all right here if you want to get a heads up on it or just get some practice in. Okay, so that concludes my video um, that I had been recording this whole time. We just went over everything you've learned in JavaScript. And we've also reviewed Repl.it and how to use Repl.it effectively. All right. Thank you.